Thank you, Lord. And so as we move into our text this morning, it comes from Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28, and I'll be reading verses 10 through 22. Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 through 22. Jacob left Beersheba and went out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it, the Lord stood. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. There is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone and he placed it under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey that I am taking I will, and, I, and give me food to eat and clothes to wear, I will return safely to my father's household. Then the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And all of that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Uh, we just ask your prayers on this sermonic thought. Actually comes from an old spiritual, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. I think we all know that. Yeah, we are climbing Jacob's ladder, soldiers of the cross. Every round goes higher and higher, soldiers of the cross. This song, We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder, is a traditional African-American spiritual that has been passed down through generations for centuries. The spiritual is derived from the biblical story in Genesis 28, when Jacob had a vision from God and was given instructions to build a ladder between heaven and earth. Climbing Jacob's ladder has become synonymous with making progress spiritually, morally, and mentally towards one's destiny. Climbing Jacob's ladder speaks to the notion that faith, dedication, and obedience will enable you and I as a believer in Jesus Christ to ascend higher in our spiritual journey because every round goes higher and higher. And so it gives a sense, uh, one sense of a movement to go higher and higher. And in order to do that, you must be steadfast and persevere no matter what obstacles come your way. By focusing on the reassuring phrases, every round goes higher and higher, we are reminded of the importance of staying positive when faced with negative feelings and situations. The song is certainly befitting of the journey of Africans to America, who have always been a people on the move always moving in some direction, moving from the middle passage across the Atlantic to America. We have always been a people on the move. We move from slavery to reconstruction during a time when African-American families were promised 40 acres and a mule, but the promise was never fulfilled. 
We then moved from Reconstruction to Jim Crow and then to the Great Migration. African Americans were truly on the move. And so we have always made great progress. We have always been a people who has made progress in the midst of struggle. And we still, church, we still have a long way to go. We are reminded of how far we have to go whenever we look at the news and learn that another black child has been senselessly killed. We are reminded we have a long way to go when we see police officers beating or shooting on unarmed black men. We are reminded that we have a long way to go for equal justice under the law. We have a long way to go for a level playing field economically and educationally. We have a long way to go for equal access to affordable housing and health care. We have a long way to go with respect to gun reform and eradicating racism and bringing healing and reconciliation to our communities. We have a long way to go, church. We are reminded that we still have a long way to go as many of our people and some sitting right here in this sanctuary and worshiping online. We have a long way to go because we struggle with high blood pressure, diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease. We are reminded we have a long way to go. And in many aspects, we find ourselves like Jacob found himself between a rock and a hard place. Well, you see, Jacob was running for his life because his brother Esau was going to kill him. Jacob had deceived his brother. He had stolen Esau's birthright. Jacob stole the coveted blessing that God had provided to the firstborn. And so Jacob did so by deceiving his father Isaac. And so with the help of the mother, uh, Rebecca, she sent uh, Jacob away to get away so that he would not be killed. And so we see now Jacob here in the wilderness, and he is in the wilderness because his brother has planned to kill him. But not only is Jacob in a physical wilderness, he's also in an emotional wilderness. He's estranged from his father. He is estranged from his mother. He, he is in a wilderness with nobody to talk to and nobody that really understands him. He doesn't know where his next meal is coming from, and he is using a rock as a pillar. Lord have mercy. Has anybody ever been in the wilderness alone, and it seems like nobody cares? Seems like there is no hope. Anybody ever been in a situation like that in a broken relationship you lost your job your mother passed your father died your husband died your wife died and you are battling with depression uh, is anybody ever been there your loved one is suffering with dementia and Alzheimer's you had hip and knee surgery and your hip and knee are still not working right yeah the business deal fell through no money to pay your bills does anybody know what it means to live in a wilderness or be in a wilderness? Jacob in the text is in the wilderness, but the good news is that God showed up in Jacob's wilderness experience. And I've come to tell you this morning that God will show up in your wilderness experience. Jacob said, surely the Lord is in this place and God will show up in your wilderness experience. And not only does God show up in your wilderness experience, God will let you know I am with you and I will watch Watch over you wherever you go. I will not leave you or forsake you. And that is good news to know that God will show up in our wilderness experience. God will show up as you deal with your health challenges. God will show up as you deal with situations on your job. God will show up despite the, the, the argument you had with your siblings last night. God will show up in the midst of your wilderness experience. And when God shows up, God will speak a word of comfort. God said to Jacob, as, as I was with your father, I will be with you. And this is a promise of his presence. He said, not only will I be with you, but I'm going to bless you and I'm going to guide you along the way. Even while you're in this wilderness, I'm going to guide you. So when God shows up, God always has a word of encouragement. When God shows up, God always has a word of comfort. When God shows up, God always has a word of guidance. When God shows up, God always has a word of protection. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with you and will speak a word of 
comfort. He'll tell you weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God will show up and speak a word of hope that tells you many are the afflictions of the righteous, but I'm going to deliver you from them all. When God shows up, God will speak a word and say, wait on the Lord, and, 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 and God will give you strength. They you will mount up with wings as an eagle. You'll run and not get weary. You'll walk and you won't faint. God will show up and God will speak a word of encouragement. God will speak a word of comfort. God will speak a word of provision. God will supply all of your needs. Whatever you stand in need of, you ought not to be falling all over the floor and going crazy because whatever you stand in need of, God is going to supply your needs. And so what do you do when God shows up in your wilderness? Verse 16 says, when Jacob woke up from his sleep, he says, surely the Lord is in this place. I wasn't even aware of it. When God shows up, church, you need to wake up. When you come to the realization of all that you were going through and God is in the midst of it, you need to wake up. Listen, Jacob woke up physically, but he also woke up spiritually. And so some of us in here need to have a spiritual reawakening. Amen. Some need to just have a spiritual awakening. Jacob said, surely God is in this place. And I didn't even know it. When he woke up from his sleep, though, he had a different understanding of God and a, a different understanding of his relationship with God. I've come to tell somebody, you need to wake up this morning. It seems uh, that you're in a deep sleep. No matter how long and how hard the alarm sounds, you are snoring and God just can't seem to get your attention. Why? Because you are distracted by Facebook. You are distracted by Instagram. You are distracted by TikTok. I can't get no help in here. You are distracted by Taylor Swift and Travis. You are in a deep sleep and you need to wake up. We need to wake up, church, and see the handwriting on the wall. We need to wake up and realize that we are, yes, living in dark days, but the Lord wants us to be woke, not just politically, but God wants us to be woke about the times that we are living in. God wants us to be woke about the Jesus who is Lord. God wants us to be woke about our assignment as disciples. He wants us to be woke about our calling. He wants us to to be woke about the fact that we need to be busy doing what God has called us to do. We need to be woke so that we can be a light in darkness. We need to be woke because each day we wake up, we find ourselves on the battlefield for the Lord. We need to be woke, church. Yeah, not, not only, not only, not only did Jacob wake up, verse 18 says that he took a stone and he placed it under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on it. Jacob then, it, this is telling us, he created an altar in the wilderness. Oh my goodness, an altar in the wilderness, an altar. Y'all know what an altar is, there's an altar right here. The altar is that which is sacred and dedicated to God. And and Jacob turned the secular into something that was sacred. And that's what we need to do today. We need to take uh, what is secular and turn it into what is sacred. Uh, whenever, wherever we look today, there is so much ungodliness and so much profaneness. Uh, but we need to spend time, Lord have mercy, doing what Jacob did. We need to spend time turning the secular into the sacred. And what, I, what do I mean by that? Well, when you go to places, you need to make sure that you are honoring God and that you are worshiping God because worshiping God doesn't just happen here in the sanctuary. Worshiping God is a daily part of your life. I can't get no help. Y'all don't like this kind of thing because most folk don't even worship God, but you ought to worship God each and every day when you wake up in your bathroom, in your kitchen, in the shower. You ought to worship God when you're walking in the street on your, on your journey, when you're walking for your exercise. You ought to be worshiping God wherever you go. When you're going to the grocery store, you ought to be honoring God and worshiping God. When you're driving, where them crazy drivers at? Where y'all crazy drivers? Come on, where the crazy driver that you rolling up on me? I had to put my flashes on to let you know back up off me because I ain't moving over. <laughs> yeah, oh I, oh, I just gave away what I do. <laughs> yeah, I, I 
put my flashes on. You roll up on me like to try to get over. I has an emergency. <laughs> okay. Y'all, y'all don't be like me. <laughs> okay. So if you see, see the car in front of you with flashes on, uh, is that pastor? <laughs> okay. But we need to turn the secular into the sacred. Even when you go on your job, you need in your school, in your community, every day God is calling us to be light that the world is looking for. And so Jacob is in this wilderness, but he turned the wilderness into a place where God was honored. He turned that place into a place where God was praised, and that's what we need today. We need to shine the love of Jesus wherever we go on a daily basis. And then verse 20 says, Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and watch over me on this journey that I am taking and give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's house, then the Lord will be my God and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house and all that you give me, Lord, I will give you a tenth. A tenth? Sound like? What does that sound like? A tie. So here we are. Okay. I, Jacob made a vow to God. Jacob made a promise to God. And, and just as a little background, his grandfather Abraham knew God. Abraham had to get to know God for himself. Jacob's father Isaac had to get to know God for himself. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. When Jacob woke up, he said, he, he, he didn't know. He, he wasn't aware. And so that says to me that Jacob didn't really know the God of his father and his grandfather. And so he had to get to know the God for himself. And I've come to let us know this morning that there comes a time that every generation needs to get to know God for themselves. That's what I see in the text. Jacob has made a vow to God. Abraham had made a covenant with God. I, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> and so our children and our children's children, they have to know God for themselves. What are you teaching your children about God? How do they understand God in their young age? You know, we have church talk that we use. We can't use that kind of talk when we're dealing with children. Yeah, I can't get no help. Yeah. So you got to talk with your children. Allow them to ask questions. And if you can't answer it, it's okay. Just tell them, baby, I don't know the answer, but I'll find out. But this generation needs to know God. See, when I, when I grew up, we grew up in a generation that, that the, the people on the street knew God. They knew God. The neighbors knew God. But we living in a day now, they, they don't have that reference. And so how do we deal with that church, with young people that don't know God, that don't live by his standards, that don't, live, don't care to live by his standards, don't live by his morals? That's why we got to be light in darkness. And so this covenant was God. Uh, Jacob said, Lord, as long as if you bless me, if you feed me, if you take care of me, then I will give you back everything you have given to me. When you realize that God is with you, church, when you realize that God is in the wilderness experience, it is time to make a vow to God. Lord, I don't care what I have to go through. I don't care what I have to deal with. I am not going to turn back. And so Jacob saw this ladder reaching from earth to heaven and angels were going up and down this ladder. And, and we have to understand, church, that that ladder really is representative of Jesus. The song says every round goes higher and higher. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Every round goes higher and higher. And so, church, let us go higher in the things that we do for God. Let us go higher 
in this journey, just as our ancestors came from Africa and made the journey. Just think about all those generations and where we are now. And some of us will fall out at the drop of a hat, but we've got to have the resilience. We've got to have the tenacity. We've got to have the, 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 the get up and go-ness to climb and go, go higher and higher with the Lord. Is there anybody in here this morning that wants to go higher in life? I don't want to be where I am today. I don't want to be in that same place on tomorrow. Is there anybody that's willing to go higher in the Lord, higher in your life, higher in education? Is there anybody willing to go higher in prayer, higher this year in fasting and praying? Uh-oh, higher in service to the Lord. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Every round goes higher and higher. We're soldiers of the cross. We got to represent the cross of Jesus Christ. And what does that mean? Every now and then, you're going to have to suffer. Every now and then, you're going to have to just go through some stuff. Every now and then, yeah, you're going to have to bear with it. But don't give up. Be like our ancestors. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have tread through the blood of the slaughtered. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Every round goes higher and higher. And can I tell you, every round with every level, there's another devil. And that is not a cliche. That is truth. Every level got another devil. Oh God, I ain't seen, I've seen this kind of devil, but I haven't seen it on this level. Every round goes higher and whatever you got to face this year, y'all, keep climbing. Whatever you got to go through, keep climbing. Whatever you got to face, whoo, keep climbing. Doesn't matter because God is with you. He'll send a word of encouragement. He'll send a word of empowerment. He'll send a word of guidance. He'll send a word of protection every round. Every round goes higher, higher. Every round goes higher and higher. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. And even as I'm thinking, those that have climbed his ladder, they, they have made it to the other side. Yeah. They climbed through heartache. They climbed through tears. They climbed through depression. They climbed through doubt. They climbed through uncertainty. But each climbing get you to another level in God. Does anybody want another level? Hallelujah. And all that comes with that. Yeah. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Soldier of the Every
spiritual, y'all. This has been the First Day of Me Church Manassas broadcast of our Sunday morning worship service. We are so excited and honored that you chose to be a part of our extended E family and pray that you have been truly blessed by today's powerful message. However, please know that you are always welcome and encouraged to join us in person every Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. right here at 10313 South Grand Avenue in Manassas, Virginia. Otherwise, join us again virtually next Sunday at 10 a.m. on our live stream broadcast or anytime after that at www.famechurch.com or you can find us on Facebook and YouTube just by searching at First AME Church Manassas. We also ask that you continue to support this ministry with your generous tithes and offerings through PushPay by texting Fame Church to 77977. You can give online at famechurch.com slash giving or just mail your contribution to First AME Church Manassas, 10313 South Grand Avenue, Manassas, Virginia, 20110. Once again, thank you for joining us today for the First Day of Me Church Manassas Sunday morning worship service. Reverend Dr. Etoria V. Goggins, pastor. Loving like Christ, living like Christ, leading like Christ. Be blessed. <laughs>